Good morning, Fit Fam. Happy hump day, happy leg day, happy leg hump day, happy all that good stuff. So let's get down to it. We got a the three station workout again today. Um, decided to go with it. It's a it's a good duration, 12 minutes on this one uh, to do. So I just wanted to stick with this. I know we kind of done a lot of that stuff this week, um, AMRAP type style. Uh, to me, it just, it, especially with this kind of workout that I have lined up, for me, it kind of seemed to work a little bit better uh, for that. So forgive me if I keep repeating the same type of rep scheme and same type of time over and over again, but in this particular case, I was going back and forth between regular Tabata and this, and this one won out on it just for the sheer volume that I'm, I'm trying to accomplish today. So being leg day, let me turn this thing around and show you, and I'll demonstrate one thing for you here in a little bit. So three 12-minute stations. We have front squats, station one, box over burpees, and sit-ups, okay? So the combination of those three guys right there. So we got, of course, some legs and core with the front squats. We've got an all-body thing with the burpees, lots of legs, and then sit-ups with the core, right? Station two, calorie row, wall sit, in and out. So with the row, you'll probably ask, well, what does it have to do with leg day? And you know what? It's not like it really has 100% to do with leg day. Um, the purpose of the row is to engage your core. You're going to engage your posterior chain because you're pushing. And you're also going to engage, of course, your, your shoulders, right? And everything there. So really, when you think about the row, it's not... Just a cardiovascular exercise, yeah, it keeps the heart rate up, and that's, that's one of the purposes for the row, but the other is to practice keeping your body under tension, because that's what you really, really want in the row, is be under tension. You want to do your very best to try and not be relaxed on the rower. Relaxing is, is not going to get you the calories that you're wanting to expend on here. Being under tension will. So it's a very good tool to learn how to be under tension, especially when you start getting tired. That's the hardest thing to do with any of these lifts is keeping tension when you're tired. The rower will keep you and help you with that. I pinky promise. So we're going to do the wall sit over here on this wall. You can do weight. It looks like people have. Um, and then we have the in and outs here, lots of core stuff and everything too. Really want to work on engaging that core and keeping that core solid. That's going to help you with every single thing that you do in here. I don't care what it is. It's going to help. Station number three, wall balls, plank hold, and plate or bar overhead walking lunge. I'll kind of explain that here in a second. So the wall balls here, again, tension, right? Nice, deep in that squat. Plank hold over here. That's going to keep that core engaged. And the plate or bar overhead walking lunge, a little different take on it. So we can have a plate overhead or have a bar overhead. With the bar here, we can add a little more weight and, and go overhead with it. So instead of a single, like a dumbbell or a kettlebell overhead walking lunge, we can add a pretty good chunk of weight and work on going overhead with that weight in a lunge. Probably saying, well, what the heck does that do? Well, when you go overhead or anything with, with the lunge, especially in a movement like that, it's really going to help strengthen your thoracic spine, about the mid part or so up to the top, which is key for this front squat, the thoracic. It's key for pretty much anything, right? Front squat, back squat, it's going to be key for the deadlift, um, a lot of these movements that we do like almost on a daily basis in here. So... It's really going to force you to keep your chest up high, keep those biceps close to those ears, and really make sure that you keep your core and stuff under tension while you are in your lunge, okay? So there's always a purpose behind what we do in here. So it's, these workouts that we write, guys, aren't just a bunch of things thrown together. Give some time and some thought into what we're doing to help you all out um, and to program it correctly, okay? So really do your best to come in and, and hit everything kind of on point. We'll work on more form. So I'm going to demonstrate a little bit with some lighter weight this morning um, with a good, a hopefully a good front squat because I haven't warmed up yet, so this ought to be interesting. I'm going to show you a little bit of the front squat from the 
the front here to do. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get this because I know y'all don't wanna see the bar right there. I'm gonna try and get this a little bit closer. There we go. So, front squat, guys and gals, is really hinging, hinging upon this front rack position here. So whenever I get on the bar, I'm gonna have my hands outside of my shoulders, right? So on the front squat, you may wanna go a little bit wider than you would for your deadlift. Um, for more of a bench press style, I guess you could say. So I like to put my hands in a little bit different spot. Now, when I do a clean to the front rack, my hands are a little bit further in because usually I'm gonna go overhead with it. But I'm just gonna do front squats here and to help y'all a little bit, especially, Clear those elbows, get them out of the way. Let's go just a little bit wider with it. You know, we can always come back in a little um, as we get used to that front rack. So, get your hand position here. Get a hold of the bar. Get a nice, good grip on there. When you come into the bar, you're going to rotate because the bar is going to rotate right through here. Straight underneath the bar. Rotate those shoulders up, those elbows, and here you go. Do your front rack position just like so. So whenever I do a front squat, it's going to be a little bit different. My, my feet are just a little bit wider than normal, okay? So I'm going to have soft knee, hips back, nice and deep in that squat. Pushing the knee out, back to the top. Just like so. And then when we rack, we do just the opposite. Make sure both of those feet are underneath the bar. We don't want to step into the bar like this. Right, you want to step under the bar here because we want to anticipate a heavy load, okay? So don't get in the habit of doing this. Get in the habit of doing this. It may be awkward, but it's going to save your back and everything else in the long run. So let's go to the side position with the same squat here. And I promise I'll wrap this up here in just a minute for you. So Side view from this, I'm going to do the exact same thing like I did before. I'm going to find my position for my hands. I'm going to get under the bar, bring my elbows up, build that platform on my delts there in the front. My feet are just going to be just a little bit wider than normal. Soft knee hips back. Deep in that squat. Back to the top. Soft knee hips back. Come back in. I'm going to re-rack. Come out of the lift. So that is your basic front squat right there. Of course, we are always here to help you. Okay? And my AWL peeps, y'all should have this on point by now. I know you do. So that's it, guys. That is today's workout for leg day. I will see you this afternoon or this evening. Make it a great day, my friends. Bye.